Welcome our distinguished guests and our friends. This is the second talk of our International Leadership Competency Forum. As you know or may not know, this forum is a student-initiated collaborative effort to provide us the opportunity to learn global leadership skills directly from a variety of successful leaders in business, government, and community organizations. As our first speaker, we had the honor to have Ambassador Edward Jeregian here. He had a very wonderful speech, and we are enlightened by his speech. If you missed that talk, you can find it through the website of Baker's Institute. Uh, today, as our second speaker, we will have Ms. Y. Pink soon, shortly. And to introduce her, I would like to invite Apurva Gupta. Thank you. Thank you, Kareem. Good evening. It is my pleasure to introduce our speaker for this evening. University Representative Ms. Y. Ping Sun arrived to Rice with her husband, President David Lieberman, in 2004. In fact, she and I both came to Rice at about the same time, and I remember meeting her very briefly during O Week. What I notice is how warm and genuine she is when talking to every single student. To have the first lady of Rice University welcome me to this university showed me how special our institution is, and I'm very excited to have her speak today. Ms. Ping is a native of Shanghai, and I've been told that it's the Chinese New Year, so Happy New Year, Ms. Ping. <laughs> Ms. Ping came to the U.S. in 1985 to study at Princeton University. She then went on to Columbia University, where she earned her, uh, her JD in 1988. From 1988 to 2004, she practiced international and corporate law in New York City. Since she has arrived to Rice, Ms. Ping has served as a director for the Texas Children's Hospital, the Houston Chapter of the Asia Society, and the Houston Regional Board for Teach for America. She also serves as a member of the Governing Council for the Shepherd School of Music and as an honorary chair for the Baker Institute for Public Policy. But most of all, Ms. Ping is known around campus as a wonderful role model to not only students, but all members of the Rice community. She's an invaluable part of the Rice family and it's simply a delight for us to have the opportunity to hear her speak today. It is my pleasure and my honor to introduce tonight's speaker, Ms. Ping Sun. Thank you. Well, I feel so honored to be here today. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank um, the staff and students of the Baker Institute, the Rice International Student Association, um, Leadership Rice, and uh, Graduate Student Association, an Office of International Students and Scholars, uh, for inviting me to participate today. Uh, when I first um, received the invitation, I accepted right away because this forum uh, was initiated by the students. I always, always enjoy um, interact interacting with our students. So, um, but as time got closer, I got nervous. So I thought, what should I tell them about? I turned to Daniel and Marissa for advice. So I explained to them, Mommy is going to give some brief remarks um, to um, some students and some community members, and so what should I tell them? Daniel said, I don't know. <laughs> Marissa, on the other hand, without hesitation said, Mommy, tell them you have a beautiful daughter. <laughs> So um, confidence is a good thing, but sometimes um, I think Marissa can be too confident. Um, well, I, I'd like to um, start also by asking a question, whether um, leaders are born or created. This is an ongoing uh, debate between, um, I guess, nature and um, nurture. Um, I personally believe that um, actually leaders are created. You have to learn uh, to be a leader. And um, of course, my grandmother loves to um, tell about the story uh, when I was born. Um, I was told I was born on a Sunday morning. And um, as soon as I was born, my father was holding me up, um, announcing as if announcing to the whole world, a great Chinese woman is born. 
So I guess he had very high expectations. Um, but I, I truly believe every one of us can learn uh, to be a leader. So long as we believe that uh, we can learn to be a leader, so all of us um, have a chance uh, to become one. Um, because I don't, obviously, I don't really consider myself uh, to be a leader. I feel like uh, uh, many of you in the audience are much more qualified than I am um, in terms of talking about leadership. Uh, like um, some of the students here, I'm still learning um, to be a leader. Um, and last time, um, Ambassador Jerejian gave a wonderful speech, and um, he was our um, kickoff speaker. He gave a very comprehensive summary of the characteristics of a leader. Um, he told us that a leader has vision, a leader has passion, a leader has charisma, a leader has style, a leader is a good listener, a leader is a good learner. So I agree with him um, totally. But today, uh, I also just want to, there are so many um, characteristics um, to talk about. I've read, to prepare for this um, talk, I've Googled. I'm sure many of you have done that too. Um, so I, I've come across so many articles on leadership, and um, one article has, 12 characteristics, and the other article has um, from the army, they listed at least 23 characteristics. But don't worry. So today, I'm just going to concentrate on four or five. Um, to me, I believe a leader is willing to take risks. A leader um, perseveres in face of difficulties. And a leader is a constant learner. A leader believes in him or herself. A leader, uh, this is very important, a leader makes a positive difference in someone else's lives. Um, as as um, you heard that I've served uh, on several nonprofit uh, organizations, um, I really enjoy um, serving um, on various boards and the the I think the reason I'm serving on so many boards, it doesn't really say much about me, but I think it says a lot about this community, this wonderful community. Ever since we um, came here uh, over two and a half years ago, the whole Rice community and Houston community just opened their arms to welcome us. And I, I think Houston is a unique um, city. The people here, they don't really care about where you're from, or what your parents do, they care about you. If you are willing and able to contribute to the community, they let you join in. I think that's why, as a result, I'm serving on um, so many boards, and, and I feel like, uh, to some degree, I'm doing my little bit to contribute to the community. And you must be very curious about how a girl from China um, a number of years ago, um, have have you know how I have become kind of so involved in the community. Um, I think when I first came, I remember um, when I got to Princeton, people used to call me. Say I'm wearing red. People used to call me the girl from Red China when I was at Princeton. Um, but I think um, I have to say it all. It's a long journey. Um, this is a journey of taking risks, never, gi never giving up, always, always learning, and also believe in myself, and um, also trying to make a positive um, difference in uh, others' lives. Um, well, talk, when we talk about um, taking risks, um, I remembered um, my decision about coming to uh, America. Um, when I told uh, my parents that I wanted to um, apply to um, a university in America, they were shocked. Um, because at that time, it was not 
very common. I'm so happy to see there are so many uh, Chinese students in the audience today. Um, but at that time, when I applied, it wasn't very common. And we had some students being sent um, to study um, in the U.S. or in England, but they were um, government-sponsored students. So, but I wanted to come on my own, so I just sent out letters to about 10 universities. Eventually, I only applied to two universities. I applied to Princeton and Yale because both of them offer scholarships. I was very fortunate I got into Princeton. Um, and I had never really saw Princeton, so when I first got to Princeton, it was an eye-opener. Um, I, I was going through culture shock, and um, but they, that was a, a wonderful experience. So uh, in our lives, that's why I think um, to be able to make a conscious decision and to take risks is very important. And um, also never, never give up uh, when you are um, facing difficulties. Last Saturday, I was at this um, Asian, Pacific Asian Woman Forum. Um, I was serving as the round table, uh, one of the round table leaders. Um, a participant asked me a question. She said, um, have you ever faced a situation you've tried and tried and tried? You, you fail and fail and fail. Um, would you shed some light on that? I immediately thought of my experience getting permission from the Ministry of Education um, when I was trying to come to America. Uh, at that time, since I was a student, uh, in order for you to, um, to be able to obtain a passport, you need permission from the Ministry of Education. That was the first step. So I, um, as soon as I was admitted to Princeton, I submitted my application uh, for a passport. My first uh, application was turned down, rejected. Uh, I didn't give up, so I sent in a second application. It was again rejected. Um, so I um, sent in a third one. After that, for a while, I didn't hear anything from the ministry. So um, what I did was every other day, I would be on my bicycle pedaling to the Ministry of Education. And after three months, they give up. They said, OK, you can go. So um, that's how I um, came uh, to, to America. And um, also, uh, a leader has to um, have the ability to be a good learner, as Ambassador Jurijian said. Um, I think um, a constant learner. Um, and we need to learn about ourselves. We need to learn from others. We need to learn from the environment. And I, I remember um, when I first got to Princeton, everything was new. Um, for a foreign student, um, it could be overwhelming. Um, for simplest things, uh, for instance, I was in uh, Alan Blinder, Professor Alan Blinder's economics class. He was talking about supply and demand of Budweiser. Uh, I had no clue what Budweiser was. <laughs> I knew it, it was some kind of products, but I had no idea what it was. But I had the courage or the nerve to go up to him after class and ask him what Budweiser was. You should have seen his face. <laughs> and then he realized that I was a foreign student. He was being very nice. So he said, well, it's just kind of beer people here like to drink. Um, and I think uh, networking, um, learning to make friends, and learning to connect with other people uh, is also a very important process of learning. Um, it's important, especially for the students here, it's important to learn from your professors in the classrooms, but it's also important to learn outside of the classrooms, within the Rice community and in the Houston community. I think in, um, at Rice, there are so many wonderful lectures, and I encourage 
um, the students here to participate, to um, go to the lectures as much as you can, um, because you you can learn um, quite a bit from those speakers. And you must be wondering what I'm wearing here. Um, this um, is the symbol of Indo-American Chamber of Commerce. I went to their luncheon today as the representative of Rice University uh, since David um, is on his way uh, to New York uh, to attend the meeting. Actually, I'm sorry, not New York, Boston, to attend the meeting. Um, so he couldn't go. So as a uh, representative, I went um, um, instead. There, um, Jeff Mosley, the CEO of Houston, uh, Greater Houston Partnership, was talking about um, Houston, the opportunities Houston can offer. The council, I was sitting next to the Council General of India. Um, Jay Gush, the president of University of Houston, was there. And Mendelssohn, um, the wife of uh, John Mendelssohn, um, the president of uh, uh, MD Anderson, was there. Karen Hoffmaster, the wife of uh, John Hoffmaster, um, the country chair and CEO of Shell, uh, was there. And so these organizations actually offer um, free admission to students. If you have a, a Rice ID card, you can go to their events for free. I know um, Asia Society has many, many wonderful events uh, free to students, so I really encourage the students to seize um, the opportunities. Um, you can learn quite a bit um, from the speakers. And what's more also very important is to, um, to learn how to do networking, which will be really invaluable in the future for um, all of you. Um, and also, well, talking um, about um, taking initiatives in yourself, uh, in the process of uh, learning for yourself. Um, I remember when I was a junior in college, I was at the Walter Wilson School of Public and International Affairs. They had uh, internships. I was very curious about um, uh, becoming a lawyer, but I didn't really know much about what lawyers do at the time. So I took the initiative uh, in contacting several law firms in New York. Uh, eventually, I um, went to work um, at a, a medium-sized law firm, and I would go to New York uh, once a week. And I had a wonderful experience there. I had the first-hand experience um, learning about what um, lawyers do. And again, I encourage the students here to, uh, to do that. Um, and also, a leader needs to believe um, in himself and herself. Um, well, David always kind of makes fun of me. He often asks me, why are you so pleased with yourself? Well, I always reply him with a confident smile. I said, if I'm not pleased with, the, with myself, who else will be? So I, I hope that all of you uh, will have the confidence and believe in yourselves. Um, I uh, remember I, I, um, last year I was a co-chair of um, Asian Chamber of Commerce Gala. Uh, it was um, a very big event. My task was to invite a keynote speaker. And um, so, well, what I did was I wanted to invite um, Secretary of Labor, Elin Chao. Of course, I didn't know her. I had no connection to her. And people thought that I was out of my mind. You know, I was trying to invite the Secretary of Labor, a cabinet member, to our event uh, when I do not have any connections to her. Um, but, well, I, 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 maybe I was a little bit too overconfident in myself. I thought, well, if I try my best, if I try hard and explain how important 
uh, it was for her to come um, to participate in our event. Maybe she will come. Like that movie, if you build it, they will come. Um, so I, I started off, um, I wrote her a letter, I sent her uh, information. Um, I did uh, follow through. Um, it, it took some time, it, it, but you have to start very early in these in this process. Um, you cannot invite a Secretary of Labor. Uh, if the events is in April, you start the process in March, that will be too late. You won't be able to get on their agenda. Um, but I was uh, very fortunate. I was able to get her to come to uh, Houston. She even stayed for the whole event. Even her assistant um, was amazed. She said to me that most of the time, because the secretary is very busy, she goes in, she uh, gives the keynote speech, and then she leaves. Um, but um, because I, I think, I truly believe that when she got there, um, she saw so many people were there. We had over a thousand people in the audience. And so, so she was able to reach so many people. Um, so she stayed. Um, I was very, very um, pleased with that. And um, a leader um, should also be able to make a positive influence in other people's lives. Um, and a leader is should always, always give back to the community. Uh, one person um, um, who really st stood out um, is Wendy Cobb. Um, the founder and president of Teach for America. Many of you might know about Teach for America. Um, this is really quite amazing. Actually, she went to Princeton too. Um, she was uh, a few years behind me. At Princeton, everyone is supposed to write a thesis. Um, I, I, you know, feel so. My, I wrote a thesis too, but my thesis is sitting in the library. Um, Wendy um, wrote a thesis 17 years ago. This, is, um, this was her idea of creating a Teach for America an organization um, will recruit best, best uh, graduate, college graduates and have them to commit for two years and teach at low-income schools and trying to help bring up the, um, the uh, level uh, of the uh, students. And she put it into action. Um, so now, 17 years later, it has become really a movement. And I'm also very um, proud to say that quite a quite a number of Rice students have participated in Teach for America. Actually, um, it's now it's very hard to get into Teach for America. I think the um, acceptance rate um, is about, the average is 17%, but I'm very pleased to say that Rice has the highest accept acceptance rate about 40% of the applicants from Rice who applied to Teach for America um, got in, um, got into the program. And um, well, actually on campus, we also have many students who are making a difference in um, other people's lives. Um, this forum is an example. Many um, students, organizers are sitting right here. I think the students are taking initiatives. And um, I also want to uh, tell you about um, Dominique um, Caress. Dominique is a junior. She is a tennis player. She um, speaks so many different languages. She speaks French, Spanish, Russian, Polish, English. Um, she is very, um, a very um, good student, taking 16 credits, and she, you know, even finds time to be a very active volunteer. She goes to Bentop General Hospital twice a week to volunteer, and she um, also. Um, spends 
three hours、uh, each weekend in tutoring Russian and Cuban immigrants. And last summer, she spent some time volunteering、um, at a, a children's hospital in Poland. So、um, we have、um, many, many students like、um, Dominique. And、um, I remember during Katrina, David and I、uh, went to Georgia Brown to、uh, volunteer,、um, and so many students came out. Um, that was also very touching to see.、Um, so many students are、um, getting involved. So I feel like we we have many many things to do. And um, um, right now, I'm also uh, very involved um, um, at the city level.、Um, the ma- mayor appointed me to his、uh, International Affairs and Development Council. I'm also serving on the China Task Force. And last、uh, July, I had the honor of representing Rice University as a member of Houston City delegation to visit China. We went to visit Shanghai,、uh, Dalian, and、um, Beijing. And um, there, um, we、uh, met with、um, the officials and.、Uh, Also, leaders from the business community and educational、uh, community.、Um, we、uh, met with the、um, minister of education, minister of culture.、Um, I'm also involved in the international festival here.、Uh, this year, we're honoring China. So, when we met with the minister of culture, he promised to send. Their best performers to our festival, um, um, so I'm really enjoying doing many many things、um, for Rice and for Houston.、Uh, I'm also pleased to、uh, to say that、um, this March、uh, Rice will be hosting、um, the Senior Leadership Forum,、um, 25 top. Chinese university presidents and chairmen、uh, will be coming here、um, for about two weeks to learn about administration and governance of the university and academic programs、um, at Rice. And、uh, we are also trying to show them as much as possible. So we are sharing the group with University of Houston.、Uh, they will be visiting University of Houston for one day and A and M for one day. We will also make sure they will have some cultural experiences like rodeo, like basketball,、uh, rockets、uh, to to watch Yao Ming play, NASA museum district. And a medical center, so we'll be doing、um, lots of different things. And、um, well, so this is this is a sort of a a long journey for me、um, to、uh, start off、um, from China and now、um, being here at Rice. So just to、um, to repeat again,、um, so I believe a leader. Is willing to take risks.、Um, a leader never gives up in face of difficulties, and a leader is a constant learner. And a leader believes in him or herself. And a leader makes a positive、uh, difference in others' lives. And I truly believe that all of us here,、um, if we try our best, we can all be a leader. I'm sure we can. Or、um, make a positive influence in other people's lives, and so this is a very、uh, brief remarks, and and、um, I'm very happy to answer questions, whatever questions、um, you have.、Um, so I I hope this is、um, a very good format to have a conversation. So, any questions? Yes. Thank you. Um, where you talk about networking is very important to a person,、mm-hmm. and it's also true in China and anywhere in the world. I just want to know when you come to US, do you have, do you think about any similarities and difference between networking China culture and like Western culture? Is there any difference? 
Um, well, there are similarities and differences. Um, in China, um, of course, everything um, is guanxi. Guanxi is very important. Guanxi means connections. Um, here, networking um, is very important too. Um, I think there is a little bit difference in terms of culture. Um, in China, um, many of my friends are very pleased that uh, now I'm married to a university president. They all call me to say, you know, um, in a few years, my son will be ready to go to college. <laughs> and can he come to Rice? Since I know you, you know, we, we went way back. I said, well, um, that's great, you know, if your son is interested in Rice. But, you know, you have to tell your son to start preparing from now. And he has to study very hard. He has to be very smart. Um, so I think there is some little bit difference there. Um, um, in China, sometimes people take the connection for granted. Um, and um, in the US, it really doesn't really matter whether you know the, the president of rice or not. Um, you really have to meet the criteria. You really have to meet the standard in order to be admitted to rice. Um, but um, I. Um, when uh, David had a sabbatical um, in New York, at that time I was working um, for a law firm. So uh, I took a leave of absence. We went to France for about um, six months. And when we were in Paris, I organized a reunion of the schoolmates from China who were studying in Paris or um, at the time. And they were just laughing. They said, we've been here for a number of years. We never had a reunion. And you are here for a couple of months. You organize a reunion. So, you know, taking initiatives is, is also very important. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. How much of leadership is one person's vision and determination? And how much is building a team around you to do that? That's a very good question. I think um, a leader should have a vision, but a leader cannot do it alone. Um, you really have to be a team player. Um, you really have to um, build a team around you um, uh, to take it to a next level. And um, sometimes um, people are under the wrong impression that if you make someone to do things, to follow you, you are a leader. Well, to some extent, but you are not a very effective leader um, if you are able to build consensus, build teamwork, and people will be willing to follow you. I think that's more um, effective leader. Yes. Uh, how did your father's expectation on you, like, this successful Chinese woman is born. Uh, how, how did it affect your life being a leader or a successful woman? Positive attitude. Um, it's optimistic. It's very important. Um, it's a it ties in um, part um, what I said about believing in yourself. And um, I guess if you look around, uh, effective leaders are very sort of optimistic, they are able to inspire others. You don't really find that many donors as leaders. Um, so um, I think um, high expectation of yourself is important. Um, you need to you know, aim high. Of course, you cannot just say, OK, I, I want to aim high, but you don't put in the hard work. Hard work um, is part of it as well. I don't know, maybe I should ask my father. Uh, <laughs> well, um, I, I, I think, um, um, I hope I have fulfilled a part of the expectation. But knowing my father, I know um, he still has you know, more ambition for me. <laughs>
request to the ministry was refused? Um, it was very early in the um, process of uh, um, letting students uh, to study um, either in the U.S. or abroad. So they um, didn't really um, see the full picture. They didn't really uh, know um, whether it was a good thing to open up or not. So they were also in the uh, phrase of uh, um, learning about the process themselves as well. But um, perseverance pays off. Yes, please. Yeah, you spent a lot of time to uh, walk outside. How to lead in your family? That's a very good question. Um, balancing act, sometimes it's always a struggle. Um, and uh, I'm also still trying to learn um, to uh, um, to do it. But I think I'm very fortunate. I have very good support system. When we moved to Houston, my parents uh, moved to Houston with us. So they um, they are babysitting whenever you know we go out. We have events um, quite a bit, uh, either at home or outside of home. And uh, um, Marissa is is learning. Um, she she's seven years old. When she was younger, it was okay. It didn't really matter to her that much um, when we went to different events. But now lately, she will ask me um, why. First, first of all, why I have to go to an event, and if I have to go, how long it will be, and uh, when am I coming home? Actually, before I came, she asked me again. She said, Mommy, I know you have to go and tell them you have a beautiful daughter, but, <laughs> but how long do you think you will be away? So I told her about a couple of hours, and you know, I'll, be, I'll be back. I'll read you bedtime story, and uh, I'll put you to bed. So she was happy about that. It's, um, it's, it's, um, also, you need to um, decide uh, what what is what is important. Um, you know, make make a priority list and and uh, just do the best uh, you can. Sometimes, see my uh, my family uh, last name um, is S U N um, Sun, or in China actually we say Sun. There is a famous monkey king, Sun Wukong. He has the ability to turn, to pull some hair and, and blow it in the air, and then you will get many, many monkey kings. So I wish I could do that. <laughs> so I, I said that um, um, I, I do have one complaint um, since we um, moved to Rice. Um, um, I feel like we just don't have, there are not enough hours in the day. There are only 24 hours in the day. There are so many things I want to do. Yes. You said that um, making connections is important. How, how exactly do you make them? And then how do you keep up with your connections? That's um, how do you make them? By um, going to events. When you go to events, don't just you know keep to yourself and try to just go up to a stranger and put out your hand and say, my name is so-and-so, and try to start a conversation, ask questions. Um, I think when I first came, I feel like, well, you know, this was a country full of strangers to me. But now, uh, after a number of years, I feel this is a country. I, I have so many friends uh, throughout this country. Um, so I, I feel very fortunate. I, I still remember it, it was not an easy thing to do if you are not used to it. Um, I still remember um, the first time um, I was put into that situation. Um, it was scary, um, you know. I didn't. I, at Prince, I went to this event. I didn't really know anyone there. Um, but once I started um, introducing myself, I found um, people were very receptive. 
And I also try to、um, take advantage of the opportunities that were offered to me at Princeton. I was、uh, very lucky. Often,、um, the people from the town would invite me to go to their homes、uh, to have dinner there. They because they were very interested in learning about China.、Um, so I I would go to events and also when I participated、um, in conferences, I try to、um, speak up as well.、Um, the first.、Um, Big conference I attended as a student. It was on energy.、It、sounds very familiar, right? Energy.、Um, and I asked a question there. Before I asked the question, my heart—I felt like my heart was pounding so fast. It, it would jump if I asked the question. My heart might jump out of my <laughs> body,、um, but I did it. And so. Everything you start,、um, you know, with one small step, a step at a time, and then in terms of maintaining the relationship, that's important too. With the modern technology, with the emailing system, email system, and、um, it's much easier、uh, to maintain、um, the relationship.、Um, but everything、um, it takes it takes effort, it takes time,、uh, takes patience. Yeah, since you have、uh, lived in different parts of the world rather than just traveling around, I thought I'd raise this question.、Mm -hmm. uh, do you ever feel, because of your international exposure and experience, you've lost sense of difference or lost sense of surprise in the sense that you've met all kind of people from all over the world, all kind of behaviors, all kind of characteristics, and as a result of that, you don't get surprised by anything anymore. And、uh, as a result, you lose some of your culture. So, irrespective of whatever leadership roles you have, whatever、mm -hmm. how much you are involved in the community,、mm -hmm. you're losing a part of your culture. And if you, if you have ever felt like that, how do you deal with it?、Mm. Well, I don't feel I'm losing part of、um, the culture. Actually, someone is very kind to bring this、uh, uh, in Town Magazine. There is this article about、uh, sort of. Happen to be wearing the same suit. <laughs>、um, talking about a rainbow of culture and how、um, immigrants from different countries are able to maintain their culture yet adapting to our new country, and、um, I, I feel、um, it's very important for me to teach Daniel and Marissa Chinese. Um, so I、um, take them to Chinese school every Saturday. I try to speak to them in Chinese,、um, but of course I have secret weapon.、Uh, my parents, they they don't speak English, so they are helping us with、um, the children. Both Daniel and Marissa have to speak Chinese to them if they want dinner, um, and. Uh, And、um, the other part of your question about、um, traveling uh, around, uh, nothing will be shocking to me.、Um, that that part, well, by、um, having exposure to different cultures, you,、um, I think, your understanding of a different culture is a little bit heightened. But、um, I don't think.、Um, Sometimes you, you've lost the the sensitivity.、Um, I remember、um, going to New Orleans, um, and um, after Katrina,、um, we took a devastation tour. I still couldn't believe what I saw there. It was so shocking.、Um, you know what people went through there. Even in in our own country here,、um, so I, at least for me,、um, I I still get shocked、um, by certain situations. Hi,、um, you certainly are a leader with a lot of charisma. Thank you.、Um, uh, do you think that you? Charisma is something that you are born with, or something that you can learn later in life. 
I think you can learn later in life.、Uh, that's why I said the journey.、Um, you know, it, it was a long journey.、Um, um, actually, it started really from when I was very young.、Um, I、uh, realized that、um, no matter how smart I was,、um, I'm only one person. But if I can get more people around me to share a vision to do things, then we can accomplish much more.、Um, so, and also, I I try to、um, do certain things that will help me develop as a person.、Um, not necessarily, I had the idea of being a leader at the time, but. Every little thing I did, I feel like、um, has prepared me、um, to become who I am today. In the process of becoming a leader, do you think that most people strive to become leaders, or simply the people who have the characteristics that you mentioned as important ingredients have leadership thrust upon them by other people? Um, well, I think some some people they they are very driven. They just feel like they they you know have to be leaders and and、uh, but see for me I believe、um, there is a Chinese phrase, uh, 天时地利人和 Basically, 天时 means sort of opportunity、um, given by the heaven. 天时，地利，啊 ，sort of the the、um, also、um, opportunity、um, the the environment giving you. 人和 that means、um, the peaceful coexistence, sort of like a teamwork. So everything、um, has to、um, be the situational.、Um, once you are put into that situation, you take a stand. You become a leader. It has a snowball effect. Once you've done something, and people、um, can see you have accomplished something, and they want to come to you for、uh, for you to to be the leader to do more things. The more you do, the more experience you've become.、Um, so the the more natural it, it comes to you. One more question is like、um, President David Lee Roth come to rise. In 2004, I think、mm -hmm. I watched a video clip online, and he said like, "You have a lot in make the final decision come over here." <laughs> and what like is there any story behind that? Also like, <laughs> President David as sure is a good leader. What most important thing you learn from him? Also in your family, who is more like a leader in your family? <laughs> Well, but if you ask Marissa, she'll tell you, "Mommy is the boss in the family." <laughs> um, well, um, actually, it's it's we we make decisions、uh, together. We、um, back up each other、um, because we realize again we have to form an alliance,、uh, especially with the children.、Um, if they ask whether they could watch TV, one parent says no. They go to the other parent, and if you are not,、um, you know, in line with each other, it will be very difficult. So I have to say, our family is very democratic.、Um, but in terms of coming to、uh, rise to Houston, when、um, Davy、um, told me that、um, there might be a chance we are coming to rise to Houston, I said, "Great! This is another opportunity for a great adventure. Coming to America to me、um, is a great adventure. So coming to Houston to learn."、Um, To 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 learn、um, the southern culture is another、uh, adventure to us. Yeah, have you had a situation where where there's another person in the same room who's a risk taker? He or she has a vision, has perseverance, and how would you deal with the situation? How have you been dealing with that situation?、Mm. Two leaders. That's the the team player comes in. It depends on the situation.、Um, well, I always, if there is another leader in the room, I always, always show my respect. 
because it's very important um, um, you do not sabotage um, another leader. Um, for instance, when when I was working um, at the law firm, we had uh, a group of um, U.S. trained Chinese lawyers. Uh, we all work together. Um, we never try to sabotage each other. Um, I was the first one there, um, and there, there was another lawyer there first, and then he left. So um, I was the most senior um, U.S. trained Chinese lawyer. When the other people come on board, came on board. Um, I made it very clear that we are all working um, as a team. Um, so we help each other and support each other. And here in the community as well, um, for, for instance, uh, Teach for America, um, Anne Mendelssohn is the chair of Teach for America. I support her strongly. Um, I don't um, I, I think it's essential. It's the quality of a true leader if you can be a team player yourself. So do not let ego gets you know gets in the way. Yes, please. Which two cities in China would you suggest is most important for an American to visit? Shanghai. The other one probably I would say. Um, Beijing, because it's the capital, but Shanghai, uh, you will say, oh, that's because it's your hometown. You are biased. But I have to say, it's amazing transformation of a city. Um, they built a whole new city in about 15 years. Um, even the mayor was so impressed. Uh, we, um, there was this maglev train, the fast train from the uh, middle of the city going to the airport. It takes like seven minutes. It was so fast. Um, but even though it was a very short ride, the mayor, being a very effective mayor, he was able to convene a, a little meeting, an um, impromptu meeting on the train. He was saying that, well, um, you know, the, the difference between the Chinese system and the uh, American system uh, in China, uh, they decided to build the, the uh, um, fast train. They did it in two years. We are trying to expand the light rail um, in Houston. We're still talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. As a leader, you will probably have much more work than others to do. And I wonder how can you deal with the time management problem? And like, how can you just um, keep everything going in the proper way? Good question. I'm I'm actually still learning to do that. Uh, not enough sleep. Um, I often um, after putting the children to bed, and and um, I would be getting on the email and um, and um, doing some other things on various boards and uh, trying to. Uh, sometimes the day can be a little bit crazy. Um, start off very early in the morning. Um, uh, maybe a breakfast meeting, uh, either a board meeting or, or uh, a meeting with the staff at RISE to discuss uh, the events going on um, at the vice president's house um, and a luncheon. Um, or, but I try to, whenever I can, I try to go and pick up the children from school. I feel that's the, the little window of opportunity for me to spend some time with the children. Uh, technology helps too. I have a trio. I can be sitting in the carpool lane. They don't let you making uh, to make make phone calls. But if you are sitting there, the car is not moving. I could I could do my email yeah. <laughs> in the carpool lane. Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you. Actually, I also want to acknowledge our next speaker, Mr. Arnand, um, is also in the room. Thank you. Thank you. 
I would like to thank Ms. Pinkson for her wonderful speech and sharing her experiences and enlightening us on this topic. And I also would like to thank to you for coming. Our third talk will be at the end of March, March 28, on Wednesday at 5 p.m. And our third speaker, as Ms. Pinkson said, is here, Mr. Pradeep Anand. He's a very wonderful and successful businessman. I think we have a lot of things to learn from him. And in addition, we will have pizza outside. We can enjoy that in a minute. And we have some evaluation forms. If you can fill out these forms, we will use this for our further talks and seminars. Thank you for coming.